All right, I think we are we are good to go on our video. And if you just give us a few more minutes as people come into the to the waiting room, we will let them in. Just some housekeeping items that I'll I'll uh, mention in a little bit. If uh, if you're not muted, if you could mute, that would uh, uh, minimize some of the distractions. Uh, as I say that, my uh, my own daughter here is is running around, so excuse that if you do hear a little chime here or there. It's almost bath time in our household. Okay, and um, let's see, with it being uh, seven o'clock right now, I think what I'll do is um, officially welcome everybody again uh, to our Long Beach Area Council renewal training. Um, we will be discussing how to renew your scouts, your adults, and even yourself for 2021. Um, my name is Mark Bonner, Sc Assistant Scout Executive for the Long Beach Area Council. And uh, very shortly here, I will be uh, tuning, o turning over rather, uh, hosting to our uh, registrar, Sandy Van White, who will be leading us through this, uh, this training tonight. If you have any questions along the way, uh, please drop them in the chat. So we'll be monitoring the chat. Uh, Sandy can either answer it live as she's going through the demonstration tonight, um, or we can answer it in line. Um, if we happen to, to miss something as we go along, we will have time at the very end where we'll circle back to make sure that we got all of your questions. And if that doesn't all work, um, you can always email Sandy, always call her at the office, uh, get a hold of one of us at the scout office to answer your uh, questions that may come up later. With that said, I think what I'll do is I'll invite Sandy to the screen and um, she has a little uh, uh, training workshop to share with us, Sandy. All right, so welcome everybody and thanks for taking time to be here tonight. I'm gonna try to keep this um, short and sweet or at least as short and sweet as we can make it so that we get everybody out of here in a decent amount of time. Um, let's see, so make sure you enter any questions you have over in the chat. I wanna make sure that we get questions answered tonight. Um, but we are here to talk about recharter or renewals. Um, Let's see. Uh oh, Mark, I can't share my screen. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. So let's start with this one. And so we're annual renewal is where we are. And let's see if I can make this work. There we go. So every year, as most of you know, we renew our charters with the Long Beach Council um, to provide another year of scouting and now's the time. So access codes and information were emailed out to unit leaders and committee chairs this past Monday and um, information is also available. Lots of information and good links over on our website. So um, I'll just show you that screen real quick. We'll go over there and take a look at that page. All right, so we should be seeing the Long Beach Area Council website on the renewal page. And to get to this page, if you just go to longbeachbsa.org forward slash renewal, this will come up or it is on the activities menu under renewals 2021. And on this page, you'll find the link to um, the unit renewals YouTube that is being recorded tonight. So if you need to go back and look at any of this again or see any of this again, it'll be here. Um, there are links to the internet recharter, the online renewal system. There is a short handbook with the steps that you're gonna follow and the things that you need to be turning into us um, here. There is information about the new membership fees, both in a graphic and then in a spreadsheet type format. There are a bunch of forms 
the background check that came out last year does not have to be filled out again this year, but if anybody needs it, it is here. Um, there's also charter agreement forms. That same renewal handbook that was linked above is here. Journey to excellence sheets, youth applications, adult applications, and for our exploring units, their annual memorandum of understanding. So important dates, and we'll talk about this again. Monday, we did send out um, emails to unit leaders and committee chairs, giving them all of the information needed to get started. And I know a few of them already have. Um, we're asking that everybody turn everything into us no later than Monday, November 30th this year, so that we have enough time to get through it all and get it processed. Um, as you all know, we have fewer employees at the council, so there's less of us doing more. And so in order to give us time to make sure that nobody falls off the books, we would like to have everything in-house by November 30th. And so that's what's on the renewal page on our website. And so lots of good information there if you have questions. Um, so you, to get to the renewal system, you can go either click on this button right here, online renewal system, or you can go in through my.scouting. And so my.scouting is this website that you're probably all familiar with. And let me just get logged in here. And for anybody that needs to take youth protection training, my.scouting is the place where you're going to come. So right up here in the upper right corner, you just click on this icon and it will take you directly to youth protection training. If you have any new adults, this is where they would come to take youth protection training as well. And they can create an account in my.scouting without being registered come in and take their training. All right, so from here to get to the online renewal system, you'd click menu and you'd come down to BSA <laughs> web links, click that, and then you're gonna come down to internet rechartering. And when you click on that, it will bring you up to the login page for internet rechartering. All right, so unlike past years where I've shared a PowerPoint of static information with you, I'm going to uh, make an attempt this year to show you some live data and run through this process live. So we'll see how that goes. I've got my fingers crossed that it's going to work and we'll see what happens. So on the login page, you will find um, a presentation here called October 2020. And that is all of the slides that I have in past years shared with you. You can look at that. It gives you step-by-step step what every screen does in the system. Um, there are also frequently asked questions here and links to membership applications. If you need new youth or new adult applications, those are here as well as on our website. And if you'd rather have the actual paper copies, you're welcome to come by and pick those up from us here at the council. So the first time that you go in every year, you're going to register as a first time user, even if you did this process last year. So we're gonna register and let's see here. Um, a quick note while I'm finding my code here, um, you will want to make sure that if possible, you are using Google Chrome to do this process. It will work in Google Chrome, it will work in Firefox, it will work in Safari. Um, it might work in Internet Explorer, it might not. So my recommendation is to use Chrome if at all possible. All right, so you are gonna type in your personal access code for the unit that you are renewing. And I've got a sample here that I'm gonna use. You'll select whether you're renewing for a pack, a troop, a crew, a ship, or a post. Um, so I'm going to be looking at a <clears throat> pack tonight. And I'm going to type in the number. I am going to say I am not a robot and continue. 
It asks you about confidentiality. You have to agree to the confidentiality statement here and making sure that you are maintaining yeah, confidentiality meeting. of the information. Yeah. It's gonna ask you to register. So here is information that you're gonna put in, your own personal contact information so that we can reach out to you if we have questions or concerns or need information. So I'm gonna put myself in here. I'm gonna create a password. So the password is something you create. You'll wanna make sure you know what that is. Because I won't know, although I will be able to reset your password for you if you need to either start over or you have a problem and can't get back in. All right. So we register. And then it takes us to a screen that shows us what all the stages are in the online renewal process. So you're gonna go through five different stages. In order to get the information to the council, you have to complete all five stages. Um, if you stop at checking your roster and think you're done, we will never see the data here at the council office. So we won't know that you're not finished or that you are finished. Um, so it briefly describes all of those. And then when you're ready, you click begin. And you have choices here in terms of where you want to get your data from. You can load council information. This would be our recommendation because this is what the official registration database has on file for your unit. You can also upload a recharter file from some other third party software if you are certain that everybody's name is spelled exactly the same way and they have exactly the same information associated with them as what we have in the registration database. Otherwise, there's going to be some disconnects and you'll probably run into a few more issues than if you just load the data from the council information. <laughs> so loading council information and then we move on to stage two. And now we have an opportunity to do all our updates and changes. So we click next. It's gonna tell us that we need to, hopefully, next did we go? Yeah, it's thinking. All right. Don't be click hack, be like me. All right, so we get to our charter organization information. So this is gonna show you that for your charter organization, what their address and phone number are that we have on file. If you are changing charter organizations, please contact us first before you try to do that. If you just need to update address or phone information, that's fine, you can go ahead and put that in there. But if you're doing a whole new charter organization, contact us at the council office first and we will help you with that process. So next step, if we have no changes there. Now we are looking at a list of all of the adults and then all of the youth who are currently registered in our unit. And we have the option to say that we are or are not renewing each of these people. By default, they are all selected as renew. And so as we go through this, they're all here. You will notice a couple of other buttons that are available over on the right-hand side of the screen. One is review print roster. So you can see what your roster looks like at any point in time during this process. It's gonna show you how many or which adults, which youth, what positions your adults are in, et cetera. You can also update your unit roster at any time. So we just brought it in from the council. Now you took a break, you went off and did some other stuff. You had somebody turning in YPT to us here at the council office and you wanna update that information or you had a new youth that joined and you brought in your application for that youth. I entered it for you. And now you want to bring that youth in. You just click update unit roster. It's gonna pull all of the most current stuff that the council has in the registration database. So you don't have to type that stuff in. 
Um, so as we go through and decide who we are keeping or not keeping for this demonstration, I am going to be saying that Cynthia Johnson is not going to be returning um, again, as well as John Jones are not, is not returning again. And let's see, I've got a couple of youth who have indicated that they are not going to be coming back. So let's go down and find them. So Tristan is not coming back to us again. And let's see, Alan is not returning. Leah is not returning and Mary is not returning. And these may be um, particularly in the Weebelows area, youth that have aged out and are now eligible to be a member of a troop. Maybe they just didn't get transferred yet, um, but they're not coming back to our pack. So once we have unchecked all of the people who are not renewing, we click next. And this is gonna give us now the list of who's remaining. So we have our list of these are the people who are coming back and then the people who we've said are not. And if by chance you look at this and say, uh oh, I didn't mean to not check Cynthia, you can go back, check her again and come forward. So you can go back and forth. And when you're satisfied, you click next step. You get to a section in step three called promote members. We do not use this function here in Long Beach. Um, this is a holdover from our LDS units and um, we have no use for it. So you're gonna click right through promote members to the next step. Now you have the opportunity to add new people. So if you have applications that have not yet been turned in to the council office, um, first off, I would encourage you to turn them in as soon as you receive them. Don't wait for this to do it. Um, we'll enter all the data for you. But if you end up with a new adult, you can put that information in. And so right off of their application, you are going to type their information. Oops, let's see if I can type. Come on. All right. So I've got Samuel Smith and he is going to be our new Cub Master. So I put his name in as it appears on the um, application. I select his position as Cub Master and click next. I'm going to put in his address information. and a telephone number. And you can add business phone numbers if you have it. We do need to have his birth date. So we're gonna say he was born June 1st, 1970. And ethnic background is something that they ask for. Um, it can be not provided, can be other if it's a mixture of ethnicities. Um, so whatever is appropriately marked on the application is what you're going to pick. Driver's license you'll put in here, whatever that happens to be. The state for the driver's license goes in there, whether we have a male or a female. And not on the application anywhere is mother's last name, so you can just ignore that. Um, so you've got your address information, driver's license if they've provided it, and gender and next. And now we have some additional information about our new member. So is this person an Eagle Scout? Yeah, this person is. And he earned his Eagle, he says, on March 14th, 1987. And we can choose an occupation for him. Um, so let's say he's a veterinarian. Um, if he's provided his employer's name here, Whatever it might be, you can put it there. Business address, we can put in as whatever it is. Business email, home email is a really important thing to make sure that it is accurate. So we'll put that in, whatever it happens to be. 
And then of course, before we can register him, he's got to take youth protection training. So you'll need a certificate with his application and we will need to know when he took youth protection training, what the date is on that certificate. And so once you fill that all in, you're gonna click save. And it tells us that it was successfully added and we continue on. You can add more new adults if you need to. And if you've added all your new adults, you can click next. Now you get to the point where you can add new youth. So we're gonna add a new youth. I just received this one this morning and didn't have a chance to get it over to the council office for Sandy to put it in. So I'm gonna type it in myself. So we're gonna put in this youth. This is happens to be a new lion. Um, this is Patrick Jones. And we've got an address for him. And that's the first screen for adding a new youth. Then we need his phone number and his date of birth. So this little guy was born January 1, 2015, and he is in kindergarten. And put his ethnicity in if it is provided and mail. And yes, he would like to receive Boy's Life. Youth email address is not on the youth application, so there'll be nothing there. And then continue. And it asks you, is the parent or guardian an adult member of this unit? And at this time, this is a brand new family, so that would be no. If you say yes, then it will ask you who that is, and you can pick them right off of your roster. So we are going to put in... Patrick's father. And is, oops, everything in the wrong spot. Let's try that here. There we go. And you can say, yes, he lives at the same address, or if not, you'll put in a different address. And next phone numbers, and then for our parents of tigers and lions, since they are adult partners, they do have to provide a date of birth. And so we're gonna just put in May 6th of 1971. And since we selected father, it knows that we have a male and he is an engineer. He works for Engineering Co. Um, no previous scouting experience and we'll put his email in. All right. So there we go. We added a youth. And if you have more youth, you can continue adding. Otherwise, you're going to move on to the next step. Now we have a list here of all of our currently selected registrants, including the new people that we just added. And um, if we have any changes of addresses, phone numbers, corrections to birth dates, things like that, that's gonna come in here. Um, you will also see here their YPT dates. Every one of these dates is gonna have to be after January 1st, 2019 in order for them to register for 2021. So anybody who's not, you're gonna to need to go out and get their current youth protection training certificate. Um, so any of your adults. Now, the exception to that is our lion partners and our tiger adult partners. They are not required to have youth protection training. We do recommend it, but it's not required. Um, so they, those you can ignore when they have no date here or if the date is more than two years old. Um, you'll also see this column called CBC authorization on file. And what that indicates is that this person 
filled out the new background authorization form last year at some point. Um, so we have that on file here and they do not need to fill out a new one. So for our new registrant here, Mr. Smith, who's gonna be our new Cub Master, you'll see that that's a no. And so as part of his application that you turn in, we will need that new form that came out last year. And you'll see all of our youth. And if anybody has moved or changed locations, phone numbers, anybody's information is not correct, this is where you would click on them to update them. And it's gonna give you their information. You can change it. If you change something you didn't want to, you can click reset and then you click next, change anything here that you need to and update. Sandy, I'm gonna uh, ask a question in line here. Sure. Um, and, and there's a question about um, receiving new applications um, and how quickly those appear in um, internet rechartering. And I'll add, does it matter if they start the process uh, and then submit an application to you? Okay, so um, applications at this time of year will go in the same business day or the next business day at the very latest um, on our side. And so overnight, that will sync to all the systems and the following day you will have access to that um, in the system. So I encourage you to send those in as soon as possible. So if you are waiting on that at any time in the process that you want to stop and take a break, you have information that you need to go get, like you know here that Andromeda Rodriguez needs youth protection training, you need her certificate, you're waiting for me to input another youth that came in that you've turned their application in. You can come up here and, oh, I can't see that part of my screen. Okay, so up here in the corner and you can click log out. And that takes you back out. And then tomorrow, the next day, whenever you're ready, you come back in, you put in your authorization code again. And it is and your password and click I'm not a robot and log back in and it's taking you back to the update roster step right where you just were so you update your roster you're back here at the selection screen continue on to next next step um, if you have um, wait, you were waiting for me to input something, you can update your unit roster. Just by clicking that button at any time, you'll see that it's thinking about it. And there we go. So it updated it with any new information. And that's available all along the way here. So now we have our, our roster and we've input all of our address changes, our phone number changes, corrected any names or birth dates, things like that that might not be correct, and we're ready to move on. In this screen, we are able to update our adult positions. So we see who our executive officer is, we see who our charter org rep is, we have a committee chair, we've got a committee member, we've got a cub master, we've got a den leader, we've got a tiger adult and a lion adult partner. And over on this side is a really important little grid. This is gonna tell you which positions you're missing. So you have to have one and only one executive officer, one and only one charter org rep one and only one committee chairman, a minimum of one committee member, or so committee, new member coordinator, pack trainer, all get lumped together and you have to have a total of two somewhere in your unit of these things. So you can have two committee members or one committee member, one new member coordinator or one new member coordinator, one pack trainer, or two pack trainers, or whatever combination of these three positions you want, as long as you have at least two total. One and only one cub master, at least one den leader. You've got to have for every tiger, a tiger adult, for every lion, a lion adult partner. 
And it will tell you down here in red that your counts don't match the minimum BSA requirements if you're missing anything. So this is telling me that I either need to add another committee member, another new member coordinator, or another PAC trainer. And so I'm going to have to go, well, what am I going to do? I need another committee member. So I'm going to go talk to John here and see if he would like to be on our committee since he's a new adult coming in with his lion cub. And he says, sure, I'd love to be on your committee. And so we're going to give him a second position as a committee member, and we're gonna save that. And look what happens. All that red nastiness goes away and we now have two committee members and we have two in that position. So we are good. Things are looking up and we're ready to move on. All right. Now we're to the point where we can check the roster. And I mentioned earlier that at any time you can review or print your roster if you wanna know what it looks like right now. So you can click this button and it will load. And this is what it looks like. So this looks a lot like the report that you would normally turn in except for one big thing. It says draft version here, okay? And so this is not the version that you're gonna to bring to us. But you can review this, you can look at it, it gives you the breakdown of your fees, it gives you all the information about all your members. You can see that you have lion partners for each lion, tiger partners for each tiger, etc. And it will also tell you who you're dropping and if you have no fee adults in your, your unit. So your executive officer doesn't pay fees and your adult partners for your tigers and lions don't pay fees. So that's what that report looks like. When you're done reviewing that, you can come back here and you can go back to any of the screens that you want to go back to here if you need to change anything. When you're ready, you hit check roster. It's gonna think for a minute and then it's gonna tell you what errors you have that are stopping you from moving forward. And so I have Andromeda Rodriguez does not have current youth protection training. So I need to get Andromeda's certificate and I need to click here to add her youth protection training. So here we go Andromeda for information and youth protection training and we need to update this that she just took this at the end of last month and update. Oh and I've got an invalid email address here. Put in something that looks better and there we go and it asks us so it says it's been updated and to provide the certificate with your renewal package and it takes us back here all right john jones who we added as a committee member um, doesn't have an ethnic background and so we have the choice we can either enter it or we can remove him from the renewal roster we could have also removed andromeda um, if she wasn't going to provide her youth protection, but then we would need another committee chairperson. Um, so if we click here to enter that information, and that was because it's not in here because he um, came to us after um, we had input his information with his son. And so we can put that in now. If it's provided, if it's not provided, then that's okay. And we also know that we're going to have to put youth protection in for him. Um, so he does need to take youth protection and we will go ahead and put that in from his certificate, which we will need to provide. Okay, so again, it's gonna tell you it's updated and you need to provide the youth protection training certificate. And look at that, all of our errors have now been cleared and validation is completed and we're ready to move on. So we go to next stage. And it thinks for a minute and we're ready for our summary. Again, if you wanna go back and change anything, if you wanna review or print your roster, you can do that at this point. And our summary takes us to where we can do a couple of really important things. 
Um, one is if you have members who are registering in more than one unit or more than one position, they only have to pay for one. And that is youth and adults. Um, so you want to make very certain that you find out from all of your families if any of the people in their family are registering somewhere else as well and where they are going to pay their registration fees because they only have to pay once. So if we go down our list and we look at um, our new Cubmaster here, Mr. Smith, and he has indicated to us that not only is he coming in as our new Cub Master, but he's also registered with an older child's troop. And he's already paid through them, so he's going to register here as a multiple. So we're going to click the Enter Multiple Registration box. And this is also the screen where you can indicate which of your youth are wanting to register for Boy's Life. So we've entered our multiple here. We're going to save this. And it's going to ask us for Sam Smith, which unit is he registering in or is he registering at the council level? Um, so you can choose a unit and we're going to say he's registering in troop 701. And if it's an out of council unit, it's very helpful to me if you can tell me which council it's from. And so that um, is not always available here, but sometimes you can, let's see if I can get this in. And Sandy, while you're trying that, uh, let me yeah. ask you a question about whether uh, they pay in both councils if they're registered elsewhere. No, they only have to pay in one council. Um, and it's not letting me put in which council. So um, yeah, so when you submit that to us, it's helpful to me to know which council they're coming from. It's not letting me put it in here, but um, that is something if you can provide that information, that's really helpful to me to verify it. Um, so here we are, save that information. And now we can review which of our youth is going to want to sign up for Boy's Life. And I highly recommend it personally. It's $12 a year, so a dollar a month. And the Scouts get all kinds of fun stuff in Boy's Life magazine. So I recommend it. If you want your unit to be 100% Boy's Life, this button right here will tell you what, or tell you that you've said you're 100% Boy's Life and that you've ordered um, Boy's Life for at least one person at every address. Um, it can be across multiple units. Um, and so that's what that button does, just indicates that you are 100% Boy's Life. And that means that all of your youth get a subscription to someone in their household for Boy's Life. Could be in a troop, could be another sibling in a pack, um, but somebody in their household is receiving it. And so that would make you a 100% Boys Life unit. Lots of fun stuff. I know my boys both loved having Boys Life when they were in scouting. They're all grown up now, so not so much now. All right, and then we come to um, our list of people that we did not renew. And what the system is asking for here is, have you contacted them um, or the parents and spoken with them or discussed reasons for them not renewing? So have they been contacted? And hopefully that is a yes. Um, you might not have been able to get hold of them if they've moved or they're not being responsive, um, but at least make the effort. Um, and then you indicate why they did not renew. And you, they can change programs. So maybe they moved from Cub Scouts to Scouts BSA or to Venturing. They aged out of the program. Um, they transferred to another unit. They moved. They just stopped coming or they lost interest or some other reason. And so you're gonna check what the reasons are um, for each of the people that you did not renew, each of the youth. 
Um, so let's see, we got somebody there, somebody there. These folks moved and this person transferred. So you have to choose for each of them what happened to them and then save. And that provides us at the council some good information so that we can follow up with people or know what's happening with our membership. And then you hit next. And we come to the um, spot where your charter organization is going to either electronically or manually approve your charter for the year. So if you have discussed with your charter representative or your executive officer, um, everybody who's renewing on your charter and they agree um, and they've consented and given their approval, you can either give them access to this system and have them log in and say, I, we, or we agree, or with their understanding, you can click the I, or we agree button and continue on. If they want to meet with you in person or manually sign the paperwork, you're going to click the I, we do not agree. Okay. As soon as you click this and move on, your um, executive officer and your charter org rep are going to receive an email saying that they have approved your renewal for next year. So once we do that, we're going to click next. And on we go. Sandy, another question for you. Yes. Um, if there's a family moving out of state, but they'd like to stay registered in the local unit, is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Yep, just have, make sure we get their current address information, current contact information when you have that opportunity to update your members back here under update member data in, in stage two. All right, so we come now once we've received approval or said that we're going to have it manually signed, we come to the payment screen and you'll see all of the fees outlined here. We have a brand new scout paying $25. That was um, Patrick Jones that we added as a new lion. If you add members who have ever been registered in scouting before, so if you're rechartering or renewing for a troop and you have um, scouts coming into your unit now, but they've taken some time out of scouting and they weren't registered last year or they weren't registered in 2020. When you put them in, you're going to get this $25 join fee here. It's a one-time fee for all new youth members. If you pay via e-check or via credit card, you're going to pay that $25 fee. If you come to the council to pay, either cash or check at the council office, we can manually remove that by confirming that yes, they were indeed registered somewhere in the past. So be very careful about paying either e-check or credit card here. Make sure you understand what all your fees are. If you have questions, let us know. Um, if you pay by a credit card, you're gonna add an additional 3% to your total for credit card administration fees. Um, if you pay via e-check, there's no fee for that, but you are gonna be asked to provide your banking and routing information and all of that, your bank account and routing information. For this example, we're gonna pay directly to the council. So we're gonna say that and know that we need to write a check from our PAC to the council to cover all of these fees. And we're gonna click next. And we're gonna say, yes, we authorize the council to charge our unit deposit account because what'll happen is if you pay the council check or cash, we will deposit that into your unit account. When we actually post your recharter, if there are any adjustments to the fees, anything remaining that you've overpaid then will stay in your unit account in our scout shop. So you'll be able to come in and authorized users can spend that for additional registrants or for purchases from our scout shop for your unit. 
you can still review your roster. And then finally, you're going to click submit to council. And I'm not actually going to click this button because I'm dealing with live data and I don't want to screw it all up in our system. Um, so I'm going to leave the actual renewal system here and pop over to my PowerPoint presentation. So hopefully that works. And so here's where we just were. And so when you're satisfied, you click the submit to council and it's gonna say, are you sure? And you say, okay. And it's gonna ask you to take a quick survey and you can do that, provide any comments about the system that you would like. If you have any suggestions for improvements or changes that you'd like to see, that would go here. Um, and then you get the confirmation that congratulations, it's been successfully submitted. You will need to print your renewal application. If it was not electronically approved by your charter organization, you're gonna need to go get some signatures on it. If it was electronically approved, then all you need to do is print it out and bring it in. And this is what it will look like. So it's been approved here electronically on this date. Um, we did some credit card payment here. And so that's the confirmation for your credit card payment. If you choose to go that route, if you do a bank transfer, that information will be reflected here on the roster. A quick note about youth protection training. Just make sure that every adult has youth protection training. If you are entering dates for people, please make sure that you submit their um, certificates to us. If people tell you that they've already submitted their certificate to us, update your roster back in the charter renewal system so that um, you can capture that information. And know that adults that are accompanying scouting units um, on an activity that lasts for any 72 hours or more, even non-consecutive, um, that they have to be registered and have to have completed youth protection training. And there are no exceptions. We can't bypass this. Um, there's no way around it. They've got to complete youth protection training. So what do you need to turn in by November 30th? What are we asking for? We need your recharter roster. No drafts with that red draft notice on them. We need the signed charter agreement. There is a link to that on our website page that I showed you at the very beginning. Um, completed adult applications, if you need any, if you have new people um, with their youth protection certificates and the new background check authorization form. Um, these names will be listed on the very first page of your printout will tell you who's new and you need to submit an application for them. Youth protection certificates for any dates that you entered, new youth applications for any youth that you entered, and your check or cash to pay all the fees if you did not pay online, and your signed journey to excellent worksheet, which is also linked from our website. This year, unlike past years, we will not be meeting with each and every unit personally as you bring your charters in due to the current health crisis. Um, so what we are asking you to do is to place everything in a large envelope, mark the outside of the envelope with your unit type and number. So in this case, I would write PAC 761 on it. The name and contact information of the person that we need to communicate with for any follow-up. Um, so that we can get hold of somebody that knows what's going on when we call or email them. We're going to ask you to drop that envelope with everything in it off at our scout shop Monday through Friday between one and five or drop it in the mail slot anytime 24 seven. Whoops. Back up. Um, on the 37th street side of our building. Additional notes, be patient, ask for help if you need it. I'm here. Um, and can help you anytime. Check out all the help screens, check out the, the demo that's at the very beginning when you first log into internet renewal. Um, don't forget to print your final roster. Include the first page that lists all the applications and youth protection training that's needed. 
Uh, make sure that everything is complete, that you have all of your executive officers, charter reps, everybody is good, youth protection training certificates, and that you have identified multiple registrations. We will not be refunding or have the ability to refund any overpayments for multiples or new member fees that are paid online. Okay, so that's not going to happen if, if it's not correctly identified and you pay online, we cannot help you get money back. There's just not a way to do that. National is denying those requests. If it's a mistake that we make on our side, then of course we will process a refund request for you. All right, so make appointments early. You will need for your um, charter agreement to talk to and possibly visit with, um, socially distanced of course, your charter organization. We do allow electronic signatures on the charter agreement form. So you don't have to personally be face-to-face -face with them. Um, you can do a digital signature. It has to be an authorized or um, not just typed in name. It's got to be an actual signature, digital signature. Um, if an adult has not completed YPT and they're not essential to your unit, they're not one of the required positions, drop them until you can get their YPT. They may have to complete a new adult application, but they're going to hold up your entire charter just for that one person not doing their youth protection training. And then be prepared to follow up with us. There are almost always things that need to be done following you turning in your paperwork, and that's going to be more so this year than ever before, since we're not meeting face to face with everybody. Um, Turn in your applications as soon as you get them. Don't hold them <laughs> waiting for recharter time. Um, new scouts and adults can't participate in the program until they're registered. They cannot earn advancement. There's no accident or injury insurance if they're not registered. Think about sports that your children play in. They can't be on the field or court until paperwork and fees are all submitted. The Scouting program is the exact same way. Be patient. We're all in this together. We're doing this for our youth. This is not for our benefit, it's for them. Again, documents and links can be on our website. If you need my help, please reach out to me. Um, council phone number 427-0911-562 area code rings on my desk and I'm typically the person who will answer that call. You can email me anytime, sandy.vanwyke at scouting.org. I'm on the contact page on the council website. So don't hesitate to reach out if you need help. Get everything into us as soon as possible. And I thank you sincerely for being here tonight and taking time to do this. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing and see where we are. Yeah, Sandy, right. I've got, uh, got a couple more questions for you. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's a two-parter here, um, not necessarily related, but uh, one about um, payments. Um, if there's a bank problem, can our members write the check to BSA and can it go into our scout account? Um, number two is, are there any changes to JTE that reflect COVID challenges? Um, okay, so banking issues, I'm going to assume that individual members are wanting to write checks um, and put them into the account in the scout shop. And yes, that's fine. We can absolutely do that. So if there's not a way for the unit to write a single check or to collect money from their individual members and get it to us, um, individual checks are okay. It's not preferred, but we can take them. Money is money. Um, journey to excellence. I don't know the details. I know there has been talk about changes to some of the criteria um, based on COVID-19 and all of the challenges associated with running scouting programs with that. Um, I don't specifically know what have been, what has been changed. 
And uh, and and Glenn is chiming in that the final JTE adjustments were announced this summer. So so Glenn, thank you for um, for for that. Yeah. Anything else? Because I could not see the chat box, Mark, while I was sharing my screen. <laughs> I think uh, uh, John Milkey has a question. John, do you want to unmute yourself? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. I was just curious, do I have a copy of the most current youth application? Would this represent that? Uh, that looks like the most current one from here. <laughs> Okay, just wanted to make sure that I have the right ones. And then would this be the up-to-date, most current adult application? That one I need to see the very last page to tell you if it's current or not. Background check. Um, no, that is not the most current background check. You can use the application portion of that, but you'll wanna pull the background check form off of our website. Okay. and. Um, being that the first application I showed for the youth is probably the accurate one, is this the one that's now defunct? <sighs> I'm going to tell you that in all honesty, it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, thank you. So for the youth, it doesn't make much of a difference. For the adults, the thing that's changed is the background check authorization form. Okay, are there any other questions out there? I think it's been an informative evening. Um, I really Mark, want to think- Mark, this is Cindy Walker. I do have a question. Um, yeah, go for it. With those youth who are going to be 18, they do have to complete an adult application. Is that correct? That is correct. If they and, turn 18 and, this year in 2020, yes, they need to register with an adult application. In 2020 or 2021? If they are not yet 18 and will not be before the end of the year, then they can still register as a youth. I would recommend that they still take youth protection training and you will have to treat them as an over 18 participant once they do turn 18, but it's not required that they complete an adult application immediately. Okay, thank you so much. Good clarification there. Anybody Any other else? Okay, well, uh, let's see. Uh, we are getting close to eight o'clock. So um, again, wanna thank everybody uh, for tuning in today. As a reminder, uh, uh, Daniel asked at the very beginning if this was recorded and uh, the answer is yes. So um, we're still live on YouTube and uh, uh, you can reference this at any time. You can. Um, pass it along, share the video. This will remain on our website for, for you to reference later um, or also go straight to our, our YouTube channel. So with that said, follow up with Sandy uh, at any time you have her uh, information there in the chat. And with that said, I will thank everybody for tuning in and um, everybody uh, have a good evening and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you.